So I'm super excited for you guys to hear this episode with my good friend, Michelle Scaff. She's just an incredible human being. You're going to love her energy. You're just going to love the conversation that we have about restarting when you feel like all is lost in your network marketing opportunity. And, and she's very transparent. She's very open with her journey. And she's actually a top leader, not just in her company, but in the entire industry. Wildly successful because she truly embodies leadership and wanting to help others. And don't forget, uh, if you haven't done so already, hop onto Facebook and search for Network Marketing Leads for Life. It's my free community, uh, almost at 950 people now. You just got to fill out the information when you join and you're going to get tangible tips and takeaways and, and additional things from me about how to grow your business every single day in network marketing. So hope to see you in the group and enjoy this incredible conversation with Michelle. Welcome to the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. I am your host, Scott Aaron, and each and every week, I'm going to come to you with short, simple, and powerful tactics of how you can grow your network marketing business, brand, bank account, and impact on those around you. And just remember, network marketing is not easy, but it can be made easy with simple steps to create the success that you truly deserve. So Michelle, welcome to today's episode. And as you guys heard in the pre-show, Michelle is a, a multiple seven-figure earner in network marketing. And uh, I've had the, the distinct pleasure of not only just working with her, uh, but now I can call her a friend. She's someone that I truly look up to and someone that is such an inspiration in this, in this industry. And, and you talk about servant leadership, people that lead with their heart. And this is someone that absolutely does all of that and more. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here today. So grateful for you for sharing your time and your energy with my audience today. It is an honor to be here and I am so grateful for you because you have changed my life and really taken me to another level. So thank you for giving me an opportunity to just awesome. be here. Oh, yeah. absolutely. And you know, you've been in network marketing for 11 years now, but there was actually a life before network marketing that I always love people to share because you know the adage, everyone sees the glory, but they don't know the story. So Let's talk about Michelle prior to network marketing, what she was doing, and what was that, that moment where your entrepreneurial spark was lit, where you realized that network marketing was the industry and profession for you? That's a big question. So let's get, let's start with um, where I was before. And um, I actually, my background was in the corporate world. I started my career in banking actually while I was at college. Uh, my parents went through a divorce between my freshman and sophomore year of college. I know your story. And, and immediately I had to go get a job and figure out how to pay for those things that weren't uh, no longer being covered. And, and fortunately I had a got a job at Bank of America and uh, worked there through college and then went on their management training program and uh, worked in, uh, in, in, as a real estate loan officer and then moved into commercial real estate lending and large commercial credits. And it was an incredible experience. I was working with large de and developers and investors. And, and uh, anyway, they were making a ton of money and I was making $18,000 a year. And that was when I realized there's something wrong with this model and uh, moved to turn into sales and marketing and was fortunate that my first opportunity was around um, computer-based learning um, and around computers and technology. And so I was just gifted in life, in which I feel like in my life I've been gifted many times with being in the right place or at least recognizing that right moment. And um, that led me to New York and being hired by a small software consulting firm 
and given IBM as a client globally. Um, and at the time, the doors kept shutting in my face. And about six months into it, I was just blessed with getting to the top of one of the leadership there and um, being told, you know, you're in the right place at the right time. Hardware manufacturer, need to be a solutions provider. Can you go, go get on the road and start talking to people? And five years later, there were a $50 million client and it was a life changing, uh, making a ton of money and, it, you know, really being at the top um, until I went to work one day and the president had sold the company because they wanted that IBM relationship. And, and I realized that it wasn't mine, which was the first, when I realized, what am I doing? Why am I investing so much of myself to take something from nothing and, and turn it into doing what I love to do, which is to build teams and organizations and, and success. But that was when I kind of left that journey and went on my eat, pray, love, I say, traveled and did the things that I didn't do because I'd worked so much and started to think about what I wanted in life. And that led me to Southern California where I met my husband um, and getting married and three sons and what I did in that time was a little consulting before the kids were born. And once they were born, they came after my career. So I was good. I wanted to stay home and, and, and really um, reap the rewards of, of what it means to raise children. And so what happened um, was 2008, the economy tanked. Um, and right before that happened in 2008, I had an, an accident. I had a neck injury and I was for the first time in my body in chronic pain um, without mobility and, and just, you know, what comes along with that, right? Depression and all of those things that you don't realize how important your body is until you lose it. And, and then you realize how well or how poorly you took care of it over the years. And, and so what happened was, um, you know, I was praying for answers really for my health. And um, someone reached out to me that knew me in New York and said, here it is again, your right place, right time opportunity. And I thought that doesn't happen. And when I learned it was network marketing, I have to be honest, Scott, I said, that will never happen. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm a corporate girl. I'm a business person, right? All of those ideas that we have about socially acceptable. Um, but fortunately, it didn't keep me from trying the product. I saw that that had a potential to maybe help me. And in that first 30 days, I'm just always so grateful for that neck injury and that the result happened in 30 days because I probably wouldn't have gone back and, and continued, but I did. I just had relief and for the first time I had that mobility back and, and I had my life back and it got my focus. And the more I learned, the more I realized I had to get over my ideas of what network marketing is and um, that I was gifted with another great gift of bringing value into the world and making an impact in the world and what I saw to be the potential to be a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, and was there at the founding of it, shifting into network marketing. So it has been an incredible adventure. I, I want to say that I, I think the moment I realized it was for me was the economy tanked. I didn't want a job. There was no way I was going to go back and have a boss. I wasn't going to leave my kids. They were 10, 13, and 14. I wanted to be home. I wanted something that fit into my life, but something that I could have an impact all over the world. And more importantly, really create a ridiculous, incredible, income, um, which happens in this industry. And it was really just by luck, really by luck that I was grabbed. I think I was just grabbed and, uh, you know, brought into really what I think my vocation has always been helping people and um, building something that has value in their lives, which is time and freedom and fun, right? Well, we, we, talk, we talk about stigmas and we talk about why people don't succeed and why they fail in network marketing. Because again, you know, you know, my, my success story and the ups and downs that I've had. And, you know, you and I both speak to a lot of people. We both know a lot of successful people and we know a lot of people that just quit too soon. And there, there are so many external factors that we can talk about, whether it's not getting the right spousal support, whether it's them not really believing in themselves, them worrying about what other people think, being fearful, their relationship with money. And again, we can quantify this any way we want. With what you know now, obviously you were at the top of the corporate game and you're now at the top of the network marketing profession. 
you know, obviously the, there's, there's leadership that's involved in, in both of those, but you know, the, the education that you get in network marketing is, is, is just superior when it, it comes to personal growth and personal development. You, you can't learn that stuff in school. You can't, it's something that you have to experience from all the people that have come in and out of your organization, the, the darts that stuck to the dartboard and the ones that fell off the wall. What have you found is the number one reason why you still believe people truly give up on this opportunity when each and every one of us has the same opportunity to achieve what we want? Oh, I think it's all in, in our mindset and our beliefs, right? The stories we tell ourselves, which is why I like to be a life architect. I like to help people write new stories, right? Rethink. Um, but really, I mean, I know when I came in here, I was too embarrassed to be a network marketer. I thought, you know, everybody was walking to the other side of the street when I came around and that, that um, you know, I just come off chairing a, a national board and, and it was like, everybody's looking at me like I have 10 heads. And I was like, what the heck is this? So for me, it was really getting over. I knew what I had in my hands. I knew the power that it had to impact lives and, and that, that I had to get out of caring what people thought. But I also had to learn that I had to learn, <laughs> that I you know, had to be coachable, that I came in here thinking, oh my gosh, I crushed it in the corporate world. I'm going to crush this and I'm going to turn this inside out. And instead, I complicated everything and took a lot of people down rabbit holes with me trying to be smart instead of simple and, and duplicatable. And, and I think that's what happens. Um, I think you know, having systems, having mentorship, being committed to just not care. I mean, I always say you know, you're so worried about what people think. And I promise you, they're only worried about what people are thinking about them. They're not even thinking about you. So we should just get over it. And, and um, you know, that's really, I think, more than anything else, what holds me back is this idea that I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. And I'm not smart enough. You know, all of the I'm not enoughs, which are what help stop us from moving towards our dreams and, and towards really our purpose in life is to be big, right? Why not? You just this, you know, brief moment. So I think that um, it's that, and it's coachable. I got, a, I have had great mentors in my life, and and Scott, you are absolutely one of them. You've just shifted me into a incredible opening, and you know, stretched me to new content, new ways, but to show me a system and a way to plug in and be simple and. And it's laid out for me. It's simple steps. And, and when we can have simple steps, and I think that's my long way of going around back to that, it's the simple actions that I didn't take in the beginning that made me fail. But my mentor said to me, I know why you're successful because somebody asked me, why are you where you are? And I'm where I am. And we started at the same time. And I thought, gosh, that's a great question. I'd love the answer to that. And of course, my mentor called within the next five minutes and said, I know it's because you understand that failure is a part of the journey. You're going to fall and fall and fall, but you constantly get up. You never quit. Um, and, and I know, you know, the gift that I have now, and I don't worry about what people think, but more importantly, I have really focused on systems. And that's why you have you know, opened a door to me with a, with simple systems that show me an opportunity to just make a bigger impact and expand my conversations and connections with more and more people all over the world. So grateful for that. Well, I, I appreciate that testimonial. And, and obviously, it, it's not just about the coaching, it's about the person that you coach and them being receptive. So I appreciate you being so coachable and open and willing to learn because people might be thinking like, oh, here's this woman that achieved great success corporate wise she achieved massive success network marketing why does she need a coach why does she need mentors and what i what i can say is that you know the teacher is always the student you know i have a team around me i have people that i mentor with and work with because if that person thinks they know everything they actually know nothing and what i can also tell you is that very early on in my network marketing career, it was about 90 days I hired my first coach. And I had never hired a coach before. Now, I'll preface that by saying for business coaching, when I was in bodybuilding, I did hire a trainer, a nutritionist, and an opposing coach. So I always, unbeknownst to me, I knew the value of investing in other people in yourself. And I know there's so many network marketers that are listening to this that are saying, 
I, you know, my company knows everything. We have the tools all right there. We have the systems. My upline knows this. And, and here's a person that has a, a large organization that still invests back into herself so she can obviously not only bless herself, but bless her team. Why do you feel most people don't do more investing outside of their opportunity? Because whether people want to acknowledge this or not, you're a business owner. It's, it, every vehicle looks different. Some people's vehicle is a brick and mortar. Some people's vehicle is a, a consulting firm. Or another vehicle could be an Etsy store or a network marketing vehicle. All of those businesses require the same things. You need to learn not to take a shortcut, but to shorten the learning curve. So how instrumental is coaching and mentoring how instrumental has it been for you? But for those that have never invested outside of their, their company, for those that have never invested into themselves, how important is that for people to really get to those goals and achieve those goals that they're striving for? Well, I think that it is actually why we do network marketing <laughs> why we're, and how you're going to be successful at it. If it, being willing to just put yourself out there and learn and grow and try new things. And, and more importantly, you know, sh take those shortcuts, which a coach brings you, you know, this is, this is doing something that you've never done before. And I got lucky that I found a company that I've been with for 11 years, but I was surrounded and really raised my hand and asked for help. And, and when I did that, I never stopped because I realized what happened was all of that time I'd spent spinning and worrying and wondering and trying to figure it out. It, you know, everything is figure outable. <laughs> I love that book. But the fact is that it's way better when somebody's already figured it out and they can help you just take the simple steps, plug into that system that they have the expertise for. And, and I, more than anything else in the last five years, I have, really looked at this business the way I look at the world, right? It's changing so rapidly. If we're not changing rapidly, we're going to be obsolete. And I knew that I was going to continue to build through this next wave of growth and momentum. And I wanted to build it through where people are today, which is on social media. And now I'm older. <laughs> this came later in my life. So when I started thinking about doing Facebook lives, it was like, what? But I got a mentor and a coach who taught me about branding and helped me. He was the person, the person who said, you're a life architect. This is what you do. And really helped me find my voice and pushed me as you pushed me, Scott, which I'm so grateful for with gentle hands. Um, because, you know, a lot of times you'll step back and go, no, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, and then, uh, you know, eventually you get to the cliff and you go, okay, boom, and you dive. And um, it is mentors that have taught me how to be relevant. I'm especially right now, I am voraciously trying to figure out the space and there's so much noise. And I'm really grateful that it really has been through network that I got to Scott, right? Through people that I trust who said, you got to meet Scott. Um, you got to be in LinkedIn and, and some my branding person and my internet marketing person, you know, and advertising. I mean, I've just went out and reached to people that I really trusted and believed in and saw how, how incredible they are. And I said, will you coach me or will you partner with me? Let's be strategic partners. Whatever it is, I want to work with you. And, and so that's really been my focus is... I would not be where I am if I had not and don't continue to go reach out to people who are so much more talented than me to bring their, their skill set into mine and collaborate on making the difference that we're all here to make in the world, right? We're all here, you know, to, to, to change lives, right? You're doing it. You did a call with me last night on my team and you changed, you made me look like a hero. So I like you a lot. <laughs> Well, I, I think we made each other look like heroes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Now, you know, we, you keep mentioning the word simple, which is one of my favorite words. Obviously, it's the, it's the name of this podcast. And, you know, I, I believe that, that simple actions and simple habits create massive success. So for the person that's listening to this, Michelle, that has been in network marketing for years, or maybe that is just getting started, or you know, maybe their income has gone backwards. They've kind of, they've hit a plateau. They're stagnant. They're feeling unmotivated. What's your best one or two pieces of advice to get out of the rut, but 
to continue to move down that road to achieve those goals that they're looking for that that's really helped you and your team and organization? Good. Well, you know, I love that you asked that question because actually my company hit a plateau and stopped. And in that moment, I started questioning myself. What did I do wrong? What did I do with my, you know, all of those things, your self doubts come in. And I, I literally, one of the things that I wrote down when you said that is, I think one of the other big problems that is why people fail is when we don't know what to do, we do nothing. And so having a system that's simple is everything. And what happened for me was I saw as new leadership came in, I saw that this was actually going to happen. My doubts were, you know, that were, were relieved. And I saw that it was going to happen again, which meant I had to go do it again. And I'm telling you, it made me want to throw up because to go build again and start again, and not that I was starting with a new team because I still had that, that great team there, but to just go do what I did to build that next wave of momentum um, and growth. And what happened was I, I say to everybody, I had a restart button. I just made a decision that, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm not going to miss this. And, and I'm going to do what it takes to reinvent or really reimagine myself and figure out what I need to do to be successful today. And it was really surrounding myself in a lot of confusion because I was confused about what to do. And then I would hear somebody say something and I try to do it. And I, I, you know, it, it's one thing for people to tell you what to do. It's another thing when they give you the simple steps like you do, which is, you know, here's your calendar. Here's what you do on a consistent day basis. Here's your daily method of operation. And, and then the, the other tools that can help you really just have confidence that you're going to figure this out, that you're going to get better at it, that you don't have to figure out what to do. You're given the steps um, that help you say, this is plug into this, do this consistently every day, build new habits, get better over time, practice, practice, practice. And um, that's why I'm so excited about the future because I've got really good people around me who in different areas where I want to connect, make those human connections, they've given me the simple steps to be relevant every day and to show up every day and to apply myself every day. I, I always say that practice always makes practice. You, you know, you, and I, I always use LeBron James as an example, and, and I still believe, and people can argue with me, I, I still feel, you know, he's one of the top three greatest basketball players of all time and arguably is probably the greatest player in the world right now and he's doing it at an age 35 years old he spends a million and a half dollars a year just on his body and he still practices every single day he still goes to the gym every single day working at his body working on his moves to perfect his craft he he didn't reach the pinnacle and say you know what i'm good i'm the best player in the world i'm just going to kick back and coast and and the network marketing is the same thing. You're always looking to strive higher and higher and higher. So you, you touched on something that, you know, companies go through ups and downs all the time. It's, it's just how the industry works. It's the ebbs and the flows. Outside of the, the plateau that the company had to go through, what would you say is the greatest obstacle that you have had to face in the 11 years that you've been building in network marketing that that taught you the greatest lesson? I'll tell you what, and this is my mentor at one of our big events. He was, grabbed me and he said, you know, if I could change one thing about you, it would be this, and you're not gonna like it, <laughs> which I'm like, okay. Um, and he said, you are like a semi-automatic rifle. Now, I do not wanna be a semi-automatic rifle on anything, right? So that bummed me out, but, it, but he said, you spray your energy everywhere. You try to help everyone. And the thing is, it's exhausting. And I, I'm, I just started crying because I go, I'm exhausted. You're so right. And I do. I just want to help everybody. And, and the fact is, I had to learn that, you know, I can only help those who want to go. And it is leading a volunteer army. And, um, you know, in the corporate world, everybody does what you say to do because they're, that's how they get paid. But here it's not. And I had to let go of what I wanted and, and really embrace and listen to what and watch what someone was willing to do. But what he said to me in the next moment was, 
the key, which is I want you to be an assault rifle. And again, these are bad analogies in the world, but, and it, you know, but I got it. He said, I really want you to focus on one or two or three people now that you can help, that you can make an impact and stay focused. It doesn't, you know, you said this last night, right? It's not that you need the world. You need really a few really good people. And it was a real few really good people who opened up the doors to more good people and more good people and more good people. And, and that's how movements get built and, and how we really, you know, expand our circle of, of impact and I call it grace in the world, right? And, and that's really what it was, is really letting go of, of what I wanted and being present for who was, who was looking for, what, for, for help, showing up and helping. And there, there's a lot of guilt that can play into that. And I, I was a, a people pleaser. I'm, I'm a recovering people pleaser right now. And, and that's the thing, you know, I cared more about being liked than respected. So I was willing to get walked all over and taken advantage of. And I, I got to the point where I'm like, you know what, whether I people please or not, 50% of the people are going to like me, 50% of the people aren't, and that's okay. And I need to be I need to be okay with both of that. And, you know, it's one of those things where we can only control what we can control. And, and I said it last night um, when we did that training, you know, instead of dragging the thousands, run with a few, you know, the, the quality people, and this is what people don't understand, the quality people lead to the quantity of people. The, the quality people open up the doors to the masses, not the other way. The masses don't lead to the quality people. It's, it's not how it works. You have to seek out the quality people to get to the quantity. But I want to touch back on something that you said, and I've never heard of, heard it before, and, and I think it was genius. And you, you used the quote, volunteer army. Mm. And, and I think that's, that's really, that's really, essential and i and i want you guys to hear this again that you have to understand that in network marketing people are volunteering themselves their time their energy their efforts to build with you they're not get there's no base salary they're not getting a direct deposit every two weeks and if they quit they're not putting in their two weeks notice and then they just sneak out the back door and then go into witness protection and you never hear from them again so having the right volunteer army. So I want to dig into that really quickly. <laughs> First of all, genius. I like that word. No, but um, I have to say, the thing that about volunteer army for me, once I realized that, because it was that shift from my corporate girl, right? Hey, I'd always say, we're building a championship team. You want a spot on the team? You want to be, uh, you know, on the starting five? Let's go. You got to go because we're going to do great things. And, and I said that here, um, but you know, again, tried to help people who, who didn't really want to, to even be in the game. And, and so what happens is that when I made that shift and really understood that this isn't about managing people, this is about leading people, which means being the example, which is showing people the way and connecting them with other leaders, right? Other people who can help them become the person that they need to be to really believe and receive the great gifts that life is here ready to give hand them, right? And, and that's the part where I, you know, to me, the more voices, that's what I learned, right? It, when I got out of the way and brought more people to, to, to support and develop leaders, um, that that's when I think a volunteer army can learn from different people the same information, but hear it right from someone else and really see that their voice could be one of those other voices out there and, and finally step into their, their, their purpose, right? Their power, which is what we're here to do, right? Help people be the leader that we know they can be and find the best ways. That's all I'm searching for. I was a people person, people pleaser. And then it really was, you said it last night, finding people who saw what I saw, believed what I believed and were willing to do what I was willing to do to go, go change lives and make that impact. Then you know you've got partners and then you know you can really go do things in the world. And we spend, you know, 90% of the time with the, ten, the well, we spend, yeah, 90% of the time with the 90% that aren't going to do it instead of the 10% who are and, and that shift too. 
really helped not only that, but as my mentor taught me, when I started to focus on the few and help them rise up, they were the example for the rest of my team that this is, they can rise up too, right? It's not what we say, it's how we show people what can happen too. And these relationships that you, and I think this is another thing that people don't understand, the, the, the relationships that you develop with people when you're building a network marketing opportunity is, they become family. I, I mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very deep and meaningful relationship when you're, when you're invested in someone else and their goals and, and what they want to achieve. When you're really a giver, the business takes on new meaning. It, it's, it's hard to explain. And, and, and this is also what I want you to touch on because there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that, that aren't in network marketing. They're in business coaching. They're just in you know, the entrepreneurship. What's a misconception that these people might think about network marketing that they really don't know? Oh, that it's a pyramid because I came from a pyramid, right? I built something. In, um, but I think that, you know, why do we do anything, right? Why do you go join a company or a network marketing company or buy, start a company? Because you believe that you're going to bring value. You believe in the future that you're going to, build something that's huge, right? That's going to live beyond you. And the thing about the corporate world that I didn't realize until I became a network marketer is that, you know, it, I only got paid for when I worked and I could be gone just as quick, right? And so it was not in my control. And, um, and that was really what I think we don't realize, right? Because we're taught to climb that ladder and this is your keys to success. But really, it's the keys to somebody else's success, right? Whose ladder you're building or climbing for them. And, and when I saw that this was a way to own a business inside of my life without the challenges of running a business, because that's not me. I'm not a business. I would never get the lights on on time or anything else. I love to educate and help people, right? I love to inspire and motivate people. And so that was, for me, the opportunity to not to own a business without a business and to really be rewarded for what we do. And if you like to go to work and make things happen and to create value in the world, you will be successful in network marketing. Because the fact is that 90% of people or 60% of people at least don't do anything, right? And, and it's, just, it's just who's gonna do the work? Who's gonna do it consistently over time? And, and if you're that person, you're going to crush it over here. And so as the world changes, look at us right now, right? I heard Harvard just closed their doors and, and schools out, right? And, and that, you know, we're changing. And this new economy, which is the best blessing I ever got, working from home inside of my life with a business that doesn't run my life, that, you know, I can, you know, as with you, my dad, <laughs> running around at the last minute to get here to this call. Um, it is such a gift of freedom and time. But more importantly, I thought that I was building something that would last forever in the corporate world. And I know here that I actually am, that I will pass this on to my family and um, it will be my, you know, a legacy that I can leave, not just the financial piece of it, but as you talked about, I mean, I, the community of people who this industry has connected me with, like you and my partners, one of them said to me the other day, you know, this isn't what you're supposed to do, not network, because hers was the network marketing thing, but she's a business partner of mine. And, and I, she said, you know, you're supposed to do something else. And I said, well, I agree. My, my vision is bigger. Like, I'm going to write a book like you, Scott. You're my, my inspiration there. But my vision is bigger than this. But the fact of the matter is you and I would never have spent the time we've spent if we didn't share a passion for this same story, a passion for getting it to the world. It has connected me with people I never would have met. I know it's a vehicle and I don't know why we're all coming together here, but I know we all have the same crybaby hearts. We care so deeply about people that we're gonna change the world. And that's the bigger vision of what network marketing is to me. We're gonna change the world and we're gonna do it because we're gonna own our lives. We're gonna get control back of our economy. We were not meant to be caged animals. We're meant to be free range. And, and this is the chance to, to own your life and, and really create a life that you deserve, but more importantly, that you will love and, 
and leave a legacy that will live on beyond you. And you can't do that in the corporate world unless you're at the top, right? It's too hard to get there. Yeah, it's, it's about leaving your legacy now, not when you're gone. And it's not about how do you want to be remembered. It's, it's how do you want to be looked at right now. And you know, every day you're doing things to, to leave your legacy behind for others to, to follow. And, and something that I said on, on the team call was, you know, don't be afraid to be a salmon in a world of fish. Don't be afraid to be that person that, that goes against the grain or a different direction where you're the one that's actually leaving the footprints of success for other people to follow. Don't, don't create a following. You know, create a place and a space where people can walk alongside of you, as my friend Zach Slobin says. And also, create other leaders. Develop other leaders. If you want the world to change, we can't do it by ourselves. Something that I always tell people, an army of two is twice as strong than an army of one. And then it multiplies from there. So, Michelle, as we wind down, you've had a lot of mentors in your journey. In the beginning, if you can go back, what was the best piece of advice that you were given that you still carry with you in today's network marketing world and economy that if people may not know what this little tip was, how it can really help them moving forward in their business? Good. I, that's a, you know, so thank you, first of all, for taking me back because I took that moment. I thought, what was that moment? And I actually think I need to be, remind myself of it again. So thank you, Scott, for that. Um, and it was when, you know, I was, did this for a year, stumbling and falling and making $500 a month and not being happy um, because I was working harder than that. Um, but I knew I was building something. But when I met my mentor and um, he, he said to me, you know, you have a big heart and you have a big mouth. You like to talk. You're going to talk to a lot of people and there is no doubt you're going to help a lot of people, but you need an army. Imagine having people like you, more and more people like you, the impact you're going to make. So if you really, really are serious about impact, you got to rethink how you're approaching your business. And, and the fact of the matter was I was hiding behind the fact of, oh, we've got this science and we've got this and I'm not really a network marketer. I'm like a really smart girl, right? Entrepreneur. And um, I talked mostly product and, and like all. And um, what I learned and what he told me was tell people why you do what you do and where you're going. Tell them your why, Show, share with them your vision and your purpose and your passion and what you hope to create and invite them to be a part of it. And what happened in that moment was I followed his advice because I think I am coachable and um, it changed my life because people just showed up. They just said, really? I'd love to do it. And it was a completely, completely different response. And, and so I think it's time to like polish up my vision and and, and relaunch that, that mindset. So thank you for that gift at the end of this call because it was one of my very first blessings that really shifted me into hyper gear. I'm gonna use it again. Well, you know, what worked once can always work again. And you know, it sometimes just takes on a different form. So before I get to my final question, if people wanna learn more from and about Michelle, how can they connect with you on social media or online? Good. It's Michelle Scaff. It's M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-S-K-A-F-F. -F. Scott's got it here, I'm sure. But it's Michelle Scaff um, on Instagram, uh, Rethink Living, and um, also michellescaff.com. Awesome. Well, I'll put all yeah. that in the show notes. So I encourage all of you that you know want to be a part of this woman's community and just feel her presence, definitely reach out to her. And, um, you know, before we get to the final question, Michelle, just thank you so much again for your love, your time, your energy. Uh, I'm just so grateful for you and, and your leadership and just uh, the, the truth that you live each and every day and how you show up uh, for the sole purpose of, of just leaving people better. And, and those are the, the big game changers in this world. And, and you are absolutely one of them. So thank you again for being here. And final question, there is, there's no wrong answer. What, what does success truly mean to you? Um, the word that came up is grace. 
I think that's my favorite word. I, I hope it's my defining word. I, 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 I want to bring grace into the world. Every day I begin my day by reminding myself of the divine grace that lives inside of me, that um, I say my grace and, and gratitude for the many gifts that I've been given. Um, and I'm just also graced by this circle of grace lives that have really come in and, and graced my life, including you. And I think that's the legacy. I, I just want to show up in every moment and, and be conscious about why I'm here and what, how, what I can bring to that moment that brings more grace into um, the life of someone else. So I would say grace. I love it. Beautiful answer from a beautiful human being. So thank you so much for that. And again, um, I just appreciate you so much for being here today. So thank you for, again, blessing my audience with your time, your love, and your energy, and, and joining me on today's episode. Thank you. You are a blessing, and you are definitely grace in my life. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, my friend. So guys, all the show notes will contain all of the ways and information of how you can connect with Michelle. And I highly, highly encourage you to do so. And as always, take a screenshot wherever you're listening to this from, share it on social media, wherever you are, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, share your takeaways, tag us in the post. We would love to hear from you. So as always, everyone, please enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you again so much for checking out this week's episode. And if you can, head over to iTunes, search for Network Marketing Made Simple, leave me a five-star rating, basic review. I would be grateful for all of the support you guys can give me. And again, if you'd be interested in learning more how to utilize LinkedIn to grow your business, your brand, and your bank account, head over to my website, www.scotterron.net. Fill out the form for your free 15-minute discovery call so I can learn more about you, your business, and how we can work together. And again, thank you guys so much. Grateful for you all, and I'll see you next time.